we have some shopping stops like the, for the traditional Turkish stuff but when it is the end of the season and the beginning of the season you have extreme discounts because they are waiting for the money like at the end of the season they want the cash money to make some investment okay. and in the beginning of the season they have been waiting for the cash money oh. <laughs> so uh, March, April and like October and November are the best seasons to shop in Turkey especially in smaller towns in Istanbul it's always the season but uh, because in Istanbul they, people come to Istanbul even in winter time but here uh, this is yesterday we had the first ship coming here so the season has just started even uh, not all the shops are open so it's just the beginning of the season but I can say that you did a very good and smart job coming this time of the year because at summer time it's extremely hot here I don't know where you are all from but are you from which parts? Which part? San Francisco. Which part? San Francisco. I studied in San Diego, but San Francisco is my favorite city in the whole world. It looks like Istanbul. I mean, when you are far away from home for a long time, all the Turkish were like, oh, San Francisco, because because of the bridge and so on. It feels like home for us. So. I can say that you are lucky. <laughs> so it is assumed that they came to this area together to spread Christianity. And of course, in that time, Ephesus was very crowded, so they believed that St. John built a house for Mary to stay in Ephesus with them, but away from the Ephesians. And the house of you Mary, today, we only have one broken column left. People are like, where is the temple? I'm like, this is the temple. <laughs> Except for the sign saying the Artemis temple, we have no proof that it was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The reason for that, of course, we have very big earthquakes here. But on the other hand, uh, including Ephesus and the ancient cities, in the past they used to build uh, some the cave of the Emperor Hadrian. I don't know if I have a 20 lira with me. If I have it, I would like to show you to... Uh, we have two entrances you. for Ephesus, the Magnesia Gate and the Koresos Gate. We will start from the Magnesia Gate. We will walk down the hill and the bus will be meeting us at the bottom gate. So we will not be coming back to the same place. Uh, what they have, uh, what I would recommend if you need to go to the to the direction of the ancient harbor which does not exist anymore but the ancient oh. harbor used to be just across the tier and we will take the road to the right and it will be the exit. So in the entrance of the cities they always had Roman baths because people coming from long ways were taking a bath first and then entering the city. Here is our first Roman bath here. Oh, wow. And water will be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, what you see here, actually Ephesus was a city that was built four times. The history goes back around 11th century before Christ. But this is the third Ephesus, which means the ruins that you will be seeing here will start from the period of Alexander the Great, the Romans, and the Byzantines. And we have the dates on the signs, but roughly what you will be seeing, as the Romans were here after the Greeks, there are much more remaining from the Romans than the Greeks. Uh, when you see the white marble, you can say that it's from the Roman time. When you have this uh, huge big grey stones, it's from the Hellenistic period. And when you have a red brick, mostly you can say that the Byzantines have used the same building too. So very roughly about the architecture. And most of the buildings would be dated to 1st century before Christ, 1st century AD or 2nd century maybe, majority of them, except for the theater. The theater is from 3rd century before Christ up to 7th century. Wow. The theater will be impressive. 
When we start walking, you will pass through some terracotta water pipes which used to distribute the water coming from the mountains to the city. They are the original ones. Let's start walking and when we go closer to that round building, I will tell you the purpose of that building and all the surroundings. So you can start taking your pictures because you'll see uh, harbor gymnasiums, theater gymnasiums. Actually, they do not look like a gymnasium anymore, but they used to be there. For example, at the uh, be, uh, before the entrance we had passed through some ruins it was the uh, ladies gymnasium as they call they call it the ladies gymnasium because they found many lady statues in the excavation so it's a recently named gymnasium they call it the ladies gymnasium do you know where you are standing at? Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> good so guess Pergamon. <laughs> Yes, you are standing at an ancient sidewalk of Ephesus. They used to have a roof at the top, above the columns, in order to prevent from sun and rain. And we are at one edge of the agora you see behind you. It looks like a garden, but this whole rectangular shape was the agora. Agoras were the marketplaces or the bazaars, right? But in Ephesus, they had two agoras. The shopping agora, the trade center, was by the harbor. Starting from here, as I said, until the Hercules Gate, we are at the administrative section. So in this part, there is nothing for the public. So this agora is more like a meeting square, like the Hyde Park in London. People come together, express their opinions and ideas, discuss the stuff. This is more like a gathering place. It is just across the Buletarion building you see over there. The Buletarion, it has nothing to do with any theater place. They had two administrative groups in Ephesus. They were called the Bules and the Demos. Bules were selected 450 people that were coming together here and discuss about the opinions and the ideas and they discuss the city's issues. The other meeting was the Demos meeting. They used to come together at the great theater and the whole Ephesians were going, uh, joining that meeting. So they were deciding the issues here and then they were discussing about the issues at the demos meetings. So they say that demos meetings is the origin for the word democracy in English. And this place was called the Buletarion in the meaning of the meeting place for the Bules. In some books they call it the Odeon too because they sometimes have music concerts here but never ever theater place. So this is more like a meeting uh, room or like a parliament building, let's say. Typically, we do not go in, but would you like to go in or just prefer the theater at the end? Go in. Okay, let's pass through that. Because the portrait, which are the symbols of the pharmacy, means that back there was an apothecary. And Mercury there. Mercury. <laughs> Let me get you and send this, Robbie. The camera. Right. Oh, she's doing it. She's oh. holding it up. Only men should do that. It does it so easily. <laughs> you want to try that, Robbie? No. <laughs> To the left or the right? You're going to the right. But I had a guest from Denmark who said that's not true. I said, maybe he's an archaeologist or anything. I said, so what is it, sir? He said, Romans are good at soccer and it's a soccer ball. <laughs> it depends on your comment, but we know for sure is that the water was flowing under the It was the library. Huge. It's huge.